Welcome back to Afternoon Live. Everywhere, all around us, life is making more. And our next guest is providing parents and educators with an essential tool to teach kids about reproduction while also inspiring them to respect the world around them. We welcome the author of and illustrator of Making More, How Life Begins. Catherine Roy is with us today. Catherine, it's so good to have you on the show. Thank you so Thank you for having me here. Well, yeah. this is a beautiful beautiful book that Thank you've you. done. You're quite the artist. <laughs> I mean, truly, but what a concept, right, as well. So what inspired you? Um, well, I was doing all of these school visits and talking to kids about other books that I'd done. Um, I love science and I love storytelling and I love learning and sharing that. And kids are raising their hands and asking me questions about these other animals. How do sharks make babies and um, how do animals give birth? How, to, how does the baby elephant get out of its mom? And so I realized that there aren't resources available for kids that take this tricky topic and make it into an easy conversation. So I wanted to make a tool for educators and parents to turn this conversation about reproduction into something that is easy for a kid to understand and there it is all the all the different tools that you're using in order to bring this to life really had to be quite the project yes it took so much research and so much time um, I've had this idea for maybe 10 years and I'm so excited that it's finally out in the world today um, but it took so much research to just boil it down into the essential things that life goes through to make more. Every living thing has parents, and that story is a story that includes all of us, and it teaches us how we're all unique, but also how we're all connected. And I just, that makes me feel alive, and I wanted to share that with kids. And I'm sure you had to do a ton of research, because as far as being humans, we uh -huh. know about human reproduction, we hear, hear about it, there's so many different types of animals and different ways that they reproduce. Right, but those stories are actually very connected, because ultimately, it takes two sets of genes that have to meet and merge to make a new creature, right? And so most living things that you can name have two parents. And so, um, you know, the flowers in the wild have parents, the cotton in your genes have two parents. And so this conversation is just so much bigger than just people. And when you make it the story of life on Earth, it just gets so much more fascinating. Are any of these pages dedicated to your boys? Yes, yes. The, the book is dedicated to my children who are three and seven. And my son is very excited to actually be in the book since there's a family in the book. It's based on us. That's so cool. I know. I want to yeah. pull out some more pages from the book, uh, too, as well, because there's so many stories here uh, in it. And even seeing this one here, tell us what it's all about. Oh, so this is the opening spread of the book. It's a family on a walk going through the woods. And there's a robin there that represents courtship. Um, the book is broken into four sections, meet, merge, grow and ultimately change um, because the story tells us uh, why there's so much biodiversity on earth that all of these living things change a little bit you are a little bit different from your parents um, you're a little bit different from your siblings you're a little bit different from your kids because of this process of crossing so that's how the story begins and the, it's all here in the Pacific Northwest specifically yeah. Oregon why did you do it that way um, I love living here we live in this beautiful place and when you look outside in your backyard walking down the street um, there's just so many different kinds of of life and they have so much in common but they also reproduce in so many ways so kids are really familiar with rabbits they're familiar with dandelions they're familiar with robins and deer we see these things every day when you go on a walk in the woods or we live on the edge of the woods so in my backyard so I wanted to take really common familiar examples that kids would know and understand and tell that story not just of egg to frog but a frog to egg and make that full circle clear yeah why do you think that conversation is so important I think that there's just the silence around it and I think that if you have that space for kids if you take their curiosity and you let them ask their questions um, then they have this brave space with their parent to actually talk and and feel heard and then that conversation can turn into bigger conversations that are trickier as they get older right and already my seven-year-old is asking questions from having read this book with me like wow you know having a child making babies is this really important thing how do you pick a partner you know mm -hmm. and I never expected my seven-year-old to ask me that, that is um, and it came out of her question yeah but but it's like this conversation makes a space for kids to ask questions and I want kids to keep asking questions and mm -hmm. so I hope that this can be a tool for parents and educators to to have that space for kids. I can't tell you how many times I've had to look up with animals and my kids asking me questions throughout the years. <laughs> like, how does this happen? How does this happen? And mm -hmm. you don't have all the answers, right? And it shouldn't be anything embarrassing to talk about it. We're talking about animals here. But yeah. um, it's really special that you've provided this for people as well. We're taking a look here. Just even how the difference between a deer and, let's say, a bee, right? Mm -hmm. And you kind of tackle all those. Yeah. Now, you have four children. How did you 
has this been a tricky topic for your family? Well, I get the questions, and then I'm constantly <laughs> looking up. I don't know the answer yeah. to that, right? Yeah. And yeah. so it is, and it's so great because here you have even just like. I can open it up and show some of the pages, but it spells out even the reproductive system. Mm -hmm. And you get very specific with that. Was that tricky for you? Yeah, I mean, it took so much research to learn all of these different systems and then how to put them together, right? It wasn't just a book about elephants. It wasn't just a book about sharks. I have to learn so many different examples and then pick which one is going to be the best representative for that specific page to explain that concept, whether it's egg cells and how they work or courtship or fertilization or growth and embryo growing. Um, so that was really fun too though to take these different pieces and put them together into this kind of puzzle to to use um, so that kids can use this as a resource and it works for little kids too so my toddler can look at this and understand the diagrams my seven-year-old can um, read through it with me and then an older kid a fourth or fifth grader can read through by themselves or use it as a resource so that was my hope for the book well it's the most beautiful resource thank as you well really well done thank, thank you. you so much for being in here with yeah. us today yeah thanks Continue for having me the great work there it is making more we're going to have more information the link on how you can get it as well on our website at katu.com do not go away we'll be right back